Okay, now into the fun stuff of the Riley Head abstraction. Um, the first thing that I would find is the keystone shape around the eyes, which is going to be something like a the angle here between the front of the nose and this brow line here. The brow line is going to curve away a little bit, and then you're going to find the keystone shape. This curve here will follow the curve of the um, top part of the eye socket. You're going to then come down and find the front plane of the nose. This can be either done in straight lines or curved lines, doesn't particularly matter. Um, the nose, I like to have an abstraction where I take, to find the wings of the nose, you take the width, the inside corners of the eyes, drop them straight down very lightly, and that's sort of where the, the width of the nose is. It's at least something to compare off of when you're drawing. Um, I'm gonna make a rhythm line between these two points that curves up and around, and then a rhythm line underneath, which is the bottom plane of the nose. Now you can add a little circle for the ball front of the nose here. So in doing so, you can have this bottom plane curve up, curve around that, and curve back in space, and then down below. And that's sort of your rhythm for the nose. Um, there we go, have that. From this point, where the brow ridge breaks, you're going to draw an arcing curve toward the wing of the nose. And this is an abstraction of the side plane of the nose and how the, where it changes directions into the cheekbone actually moves and swells out. Um, we're going to make a circle for the eyeball now. So we have that in, in, in the head. Remember, this is an abstraction. We're making robot looking people, not realistic pictures of someone. These are just abstract lines we're projecting onto the head. Um, I'm now gonna find the, the, the kind of horizontal line of the mouth. And this could, can arc one way or the other depending on if the head's up or down or facing us. I usually think the corners of the mouth are somewhere near underneath the pupils, but it varies obviously from person to person. Um, and what I'm now going to do is I'm, I'm also going to place the bottom of the lip here just to place that bottom lip. Um, I'm going to also now place the ears, which are going to be, uh, the top of them should be around where the brow ridge is. And they should curve in and about, and about where the nose, the bottom of the nose is. Again, if the head's pointing down, the ears will be higher up on the skull. Looking up, they'll be lower down on the skull. Um, I'm now going to work on the muzzle shapes. And one thing to, to note is where this inner two-cylinder muzzle, where this shape ends in the bottom, is not the bottom of the lip, but more the bottom of this plane of the lower lip. That's where this bottom muzzle ends and it starts where the wings the nostrils are see that and it's going to more or less follow those laugh lines as they curve around and meet here something like that now these can sometimes appear more like jowls below it really depends on the person but this is the rhythm of that line those lines there the next is the outer muzzle, which is more like the bag under the eye and these muscles that cut across the face this way. And these do end up in the jowls down by the jaw, not up by the nose, I'm not, excuse, not up by the chin, but this, this cuts, originates all the way up in this tear duct point and goes all the way out and wraps around down here. So those are the two muzzle shape uh, circles or ovals and then the chin we're actually going to bring it all the way up to the, to the bottom of the lower lip that's going to be the chin rhythm see that and it makes sure that it makes it so that the chin is big enough if you connect it to that point it's a little too small that's the rhythm for the chin now I'm going to do the cheekbones 
and I'm going to do, there are two of them. This is different than the Loomis head, which is usually one, one arcing rhythm for the cheekbone. This one has two, and this top one is tricky because it comes close to this eye socket, to the eyeball, and skims this point here by the wing of the nose. So it, it arcs this way, skims the wing of the nose, and if you want to follow through with it, you can follow out to the corner of the mouth. But that's the arcing rhythm there. And this next one I kind of use as the outer part of this, this piece of cartilage here on the ear. And I bring it down uh, to meet with this outer muzzle shape. And usually there's a little bit of an overlap there. And you could think of this as like a dimple shape. Um, so I'm going to go to the other side and see if we can find the other one. Again, crosses next to this wing of the nose to the outer part of the the mouth and comes all the way up really close to the to the eyeball this is like the 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 top plane of the cheekbone in this area here that faces up toward the light and then this second one again comes to this outer bigger muzzle shape It's different than the Loomis, but these are different kinds of plane changes depending on the, uh, the person you're looking at. Then we're going to do one last uh, cheekbone here, which is more um, the kind of, if you saw it, like a, a person with, with uh, not a lot of wrinkles and really high cheekbones, you might see just, just that is the only line you might see on their face uh, in, a, in a line drawing of someone's head. It's that cheekbone rhythm. Now let's go back up into the brows. So the brow comes down here. This is the eye socket coming to meet this um, cheekbone rhythm. From about where that meets, I'm gonna arc back and create the temple rhythm. It goes back that way, right? Then the uh, there's a second brow rhythm that that the Riley Head Abstraction has, and it's brilliant. So this one comes across here, above where the eye socket is. So it's not part of the eye socket, it's a separate rhythm. And this is usually a plane change where the cranium comes down and come, breaks forward uh, toward this brow, toward the uh, edge of the eye socket. So this is sort of where there's usually a plane change. Um, in, this, in this diagram here, there's a little indication like that which makes sense if you think of someone with big frontal lobes. Um, that's a good uh, indicator there. Then there's this beautiful circle on the forehead uh, plane. This overlaps here. This little point is very important. It overlaps the inner parts of the brow ridge there. And where it comes up on the head is really dependent on the person. In this case, uh, if, I'm, if I'm going off of this, it comes higher than uh, the hairline a little bit. I definitely have this on my head. Um, and this is usually this plane change. There's a temple here and there's a plane here. And then it's usually a frontal bone plane that uh, it's very useful to find highlights or plane changes with this curve. And then this overlap here is usually the shadow. Uh, it starts as the cast shadow um, on the inner part of the uh, eye socket. Uh, as far as the eyes go, I think the, the best way in this abstraction to think about uh, them is the first part is think of connecting the top lids in an arc, in, this, in a gentle arc like that. See that? And then closing it down to where the tear dot duct hit is, breaks in. So you have sort of like a hooded eye there and then a little gentle circle for the lower part of the eye. Um, and then for the lips, just a simple arcing shape for the lower lip. Um, I like the idea of maybe to find the upper lip and the philtrum there to maybe make a arcing form between these two uh, points at the corners of the mouth 
and then perhaps create a little a little teardrop shape there and with that that's how you create that shape there so that is the basics of the Riley head abstraction um, I think I'll do one more video right now with um, with a just an, an image of a head in grayscale and just trace the lines over it so you can see it in action.